playback of a radio taped report of an exclusive feature story for the Planetary Chronicle of New York. Ray Peterson reporting. Dateline, December 17th, year 2116. Spaceship Bravo Zulu 88. Destination Galaxy M12. Assignment Outer Space. my paper assigned me to cover a routine check of infraradiation flux on Galaxy M12. The crew members, in order to overcome the earthly gravitation, have been subjected to a state of hibernation. That is, the human body put through a congealing process simulating an apparent death. At a preset time, under the impulses of an electric brain, the heart resumes its normal beat. The lungs begin their regular functioning, the blood flowing evenly again. In short, man is reacquiring his earthly faculties. the state of weightlessness caused by lack of gravitation, special magnetic boots are provided to control the balance of space travelers. still in a state of hibernation, the engineer pilot, Al, reported our approach to international satellite Zulu Extra 3-4. Bravo Zulu 8-8 calling Zulu Extra 3-4. Bravo Zulu 8-8 calling Zulu Extra 3-4. Over. Zulu Extra 3-4 to Bravo Zulu 8-8. Go ahead. Contact established. Hibernation period finished. Over. Is that you, Al? Hi, Richard. Any news to relay? The usual nausea when awakening, my boy. Bravo Zulu 88 has entered orbit of your satellite. Bravo Zulu 88 closing electronic brain. Over. Roger. Everything's in your hands again, Al. Oh, thanks for nothing, pal. Hey, we got cargo aboard. We've already been informed. Reporter, eh? Did he wake up yet? No, not yet. I haven't brought him his coffee. Bravo Zulu 88 requesting your position. Coordinate Pi 21, over. Okay. I'll send you the reporter as soon as possible. Bravo Zulu 88 closing. Hello, Archie. How you feeling? Man, this time I had a dream. You had a dream? What about? I dreamt I was sleeping. Take over the controls while I wake up the baby. Al, is it true when we took off, you sang him a lullaby? That's right. 
Just call me Space Wet Nurse. Next time, why don't you just bring a cow along? Yeah, a pacifier would do. Bravo Zulu 88 calling extra 34. Over. Go ahead, Bravo Zulu 88. state of hibernation is an eerie sensation. I didn't know who or where I was until I heard Al's voice. Hi there, spaceman. Hello. This was not my first space flight. Previous assignments for my newspaper had sent me to the moon many times, but never into the vast reaches of deep space. I feared that 10 days in a cramped ship with a crew of seven men who would resent a reporter's questions and lack of usefulness might make me an unpopular passenger. The coffin was much too small. Couldn't you have found me a bigger one to sleep in? We didn't have one, Leech. Why do you call me that? No offense, kid. It just means that here you're a parasite. Where are we now? Outside. Outside what? Outside everything. Breakfast is served. Bravo Zulu 88, you're directly in line with us. We'll send you that reporter as soon as possible. Hey Al, they're asking for the boy. Hey! Hey, Al! Al, what's happening? We're off to a bad start. Calm down, my boy. You'll get along fine. Just control your nerves. There. From now on, you'll be able to hear my instructions. Just remember to regulate your volume now. Hey! You're forgetting the tools of your trade. What's the matter, Sonny? Cut it out, Al. Are you scared, son? Stop treating me like a greenhorn. But that's what you are, my boy. I took the accelerated course before I started on this trip. <laughs> it probably was too quick. I'm not going to take all the air out of the decompression chamber. You'll have an easier exit. I'll give you a count from 20 to 1. Without you go. I know what to do. Son. You don't know anything yet. Don't touch the metal frame around the hatch. Minus 20. Why? Can you see me? No. But the first time out, they all behave the same way. Minus 15. India Zulu 4-1. You ready? Five. Al was absolutely right. I was scared. The artificial satellite is like an island in the sky. In order not to disturb its calculated orbital chart, we lined up 2,000 feet parallel to it. The only way to get there was to float through the terrifying void between us.
Keep talking, Al. What do you want to hear? Fairy tale? Explain to me what's going on. That's something you'll have to find out for yourself. You're still afraid? Yes. Of what? I don't know. You're still there? Say something. A chilly sense of emptiness. Do you understand me, Al? Sure, I understand. Every baptism has its mystery, even out here in space. I've never felt so lonely. Hey, Al. Maybe if I try to turn around. I did it. Al. I'm turning. India Zulu 4-1, get back to normal position. You're at the end of your trip. Once aboard Zulu Extra 3-4, I passed through the decompression chamber. I now regained my normal weight because the gravitational area was similar to our Earth's. The reason for this being all space stations rotate around a central axis. In the ship's cabin, I was met by King 116, the doctor in charge of all crew members' physical and mental health. Take off your space suit and report to the commander. He's waiting for you. Hey, what kind of a guy is our reporter? He still smells earthy. Correspondent Ray Peterson, reporting to the commander. I've heard you're rather famous on Earth. Well, I see my fame has reached the stars. Well, let me give you a bit of advice. Here among the stars, it is better not to be quite so cocky. You are only here to do a job. Don't worry, that's all I intend to do. On condition that you don't interfere with ours. You've arrived here at a critical moment. So much the better. Peace and tranquility don't have any news value. Sullivan. Yes, sir? How long would it take to reinstall the terminal stages to the spaceship that arrived from Earth just now? That all depends, sir. We only have two mechanics on board. Cancel all rest periods. The ship must be ready as soon as possible. I must go to base 12 on Mars. Yes, sir. You talk about Mars as if it were just down the street. There are no streets here. I firmly oppose your unwelcome visit. Are you trying to flatter me? But the Hiker man refused to listen to me. It's apparent that you have quite a pull there. Not me. But my organization has. Don't forget, Peterson, that everything you put on your tape recorder will have to be sent by me before it's sent back to Earth. Here, everything is regulated by machines. You'll find that things are very different here. You may go now. Later on, you'll be shown to your quarters. Working crew's ready, sir. Any changes? Hmm? No, Sullivan. Everybody going for a picnic? The working crew is leaving on a space detail. What if I wanted to go along to get some air? You'd have to go and ask the commander for authorization. Is it necessary? Absolutely necessary. Okay.
hoping this special detail might make a good story, I went outside, without permission, to observe and photograph it. This special detail was a refueling operation, one of the most dangerous and delicate operations in space flight. The engineers carried an enormous tube from the space station and carefully attached it to a rear valve on our ship. Thousands of gallons of precious neohydrazine were being pumped into our fuel tanks in order for us to go on to Mars. Look out! The meteorite! Suddenly, I saw a fiery ball racing toward the cosmonaut next to me. Dibley, I pushed him out of the way. But the subsequent reaction caused me to bounce against the connection of the fuel valve, disconnecting it and letting their irreplaceable neohydrazine escape. Close the fuel valve! Lost. 500 gallons of hydrazine. Lost. I'm sorry. Furthermore, you went without my permission. I said I'm sorry, even though I saved a man's life. You didn't come here to be a hero. The damage you have just caused is much more serious than the mere loss of a life. Evidently, Commander, my way of thinking must seem prehistoric to you. I thought nothing was worse than the loss of a human being. But then I only saved a number, Yankee 1-3. I didn't even see his face. Maybe he hasn't got one. I knew that you were going to give me trouble. I see you're a psychologist, too. Now, look here, Peterson. Let's get this straight. From now on, you must ask permission for everything you do. And you won't ask me for it. That's an improvement. You'll have to ask my second in command. And I'm afraid you'll find that he's tougher than I am. You may go now. You may go. First, Commander, tell me one thing. Why do you deny me the honor of talking to you? I'm leaving, Peterson. King 116. Pardon me for not having called you by name. Allow me. India Zulu 41. What do you want? I'm looking for someone. Excuse me, I'm looking for a number. Yankee 13. He was injured. He should be around here somewhere. Just dismissed. It was nothing but simple shock. Have a look in the biochemical lab. Please excuse my curiosity, Mr. King 116. Come in. Hey, spaceman. Are you addressing me? Yes, but you're a... Go on. You're a girl. And you're selling flowers, too. There are no flowers here. These are diaspora. Even with a name like that, they're flowers. section? Sometimes. But I'm really a navigator. When I'm not working with the Astro Compass, I like to substitute for the section chemist. But tell me, why do you want to offer them to me? 
Oh, no particular reason, just to celebrate the second smiling face I've run into. Al's was the first, and now I find you. Speaking of you, what's your name? I don't mean your numbers, serials, codes, but just your name. Lucy. Lucy. Do you like it? It's not bad. My uncle had a mascot with that name. It was quite cute. I liked it very much. It was a monkey. Thank you. No, really. She was very cute. I meant it as a compliment. Very flattering, Mr. Peterson. Do you know my name, too? Of course. I've already heard about you from George. You know, the commander. My old friend. But doesn't the commander have a number, like everybody else? Not for me. And now, if you'll forgive me, I've got work to do. Yankee 1-3. I forgot. Thank you, Ray. I really mean it, thanks. Following the order from the commander, Al came over to our ship to pilot a space taxi from which I could photograph a passage of asteroids. India Zulu 4-1, we just made it. I bet you this was the most interesting action shot of your career. Yeah, shooting these rocks is sure something. They're not rocks, my son. They're asteroids, each of them 1,700 feet in diameter. The commander bawled me out for the loss of 500 gallons of hydrazine when I saved a life. And a girl's, too. Ah, so you have a weakness for the weaker sex. And she doesn't even call him sir, just George. By all the rings around Saturn, they were right when they called you a meddler. Well, he's ashamed of that. Hold tight now, I'm gonna make a sharp turn. Who is ashamed? George. You understand him. Is it true that George is leaving? Yes. And Lucy, will she go with him? I'm sorry for you, but that's exactly what she'll do. Something very serious is going on, and all you can talk about is this nonsense. We're leaving for Mars. Wait, you two out? Yes. Can't you tell me more about it? Top secret. Zulu Extra 3-4 to Space Taxi Bravo 9-1. Hurry back to base. Over. Roger from Bravo 9-1. Al, can I radio my Earth base? Sure. You think you're still living back in the 21st century? Thanks. You better lower your head now. We're moving back into the satellite. I wanted to join this Mars expedition. Only an order from the high command on Earth could persuade the commander to take me with him. I don't understand. What's making the pilot so late? He promised to join us immediately, sir. Al's really a strange type. He's the best there is. I'm sorry to be late, sir. We've been waiting for you. The situation has become worse. We've got to leave immediately. And you haven't been able to contact Alpha 2? No. Alpha 2 does not answer. We think the pilot may be dead. This could mean the end. That's what I'm afraid of. India Zulu 4-1 wishes to speak with you, sir. Let him talk to the second in command. You take care of him, Sullivan. He refuses to do so. He says he has a very urgent communication for you. Send him in. That's all we needed. This inquisitive, interfering meddler. He's a pretty nice guy. Do you think so? This is absurd. Commander, you are insulting the high command. Absolutely against all regulations. Any more criticisms? Yes. So have I, but I keep them to myself. Gentlemen, prepare to leave.
Yankee 1-3. One, one moment, please. Yes. What is it, George? That man, Peterson, has persuaded the high command to let him come with us. It's an order. Aren't you exaggerating? I can't increase the crew. Can't you do without the radio operator? We'll get along just as well. No. I prefer to do without you. Me? I would not want my choice influenced by opinions that are not objective. Anyway, I think I could get along better without a navigator than without a radio operator. If I weren't the navigator, then would you give up taking one with you? Perhaps not. You see, you're not being objective. Besides, I don't want to be left behind, George. It's not that I'd pretend to be of more value than the high command is, but I'm not of less value either. You aren't giving me an order, are you? No, I'm just begging you. I understand you, George. I know that you always try to be worthy of your position. But you'd be better off if for once you tried... What? ...to be worthy of yourself. I'm sorry, George. Effective. When we left the artificial satellite and returned to our spaceship, Bravo Zulu 88, Lucy was aboard and set our course for Mars. Is the nose still turned up? Don't be silly. The nose of a spaceship is always up, even when landing. He's not referring to the spaceship, Al. He's talking about me. My congratulations, Commander. Listen, Peterson. Remember you're extraneous here, so please keep to your place. What place? I don't even have a chair to sit on. Look, there are two cots in there that you can use when we haven't a chance to rest. Oh, while the rest of you are working, I'm supposed to sleep. There are times when all children should go to bed. Yeah. Listen, ever since we came on this trip, you've all done your very best to make me feel like an outsider. My congratulations, Peterson. No, sir. It looks like it might be a magnetic storm. Impossible. Listen to the wave boom, sir. Look, Captain. Give me its position. Coordinate 113. Inertial position of object 512. Try to establish contact. It looks like a moon ship. <laughs> Bravo Zulu 88. Bravo Zulu 88 to unidentified object. Over. They're asking for help, sir. Switch to voice circuit. Metro Sierra 13. Metro Sierra 13 to Bravo Zulu 88. Over. Bravo Zulu 88 to Metro Sierra 13. Go ahead. Over. Tanks are exploded. Engines have failed. We are out of control and being attracted to Mars. Over. Try to get back into the orbit around Mars. We'll attempt rescue. What caused the explosion? Over. Impossible to say. A sudden rush of hot air overpowered us. The instruments have gone crazy. The tanks have exploded. The structures melted in several places. What about the crew? Three of us left, sir. One dead. The engineer. Put on your spacesuits and stand by for immediate bailout as soon as you enter orbit. Radio out. Disconnect the voice circuit. Do you think they'll make it? 
That's what I'm checking now. Are you thinking the same thing I am, Al? They can't make it. Why not? No. We won't be able to make it. One of Mars' satellites is crossing our path. Driving engines again. Rescue that poor guy. The captain sits. Nine degrees to starboard. One more, and we would have remained here forever. Captain, we're coming in. Lucy, keep the gyros working. As soon as they're inside, we'll get out of here. You stay here and look after him. I'll take care of the engines. Gyros, unlock! Roger.
I think you hold out till we get to Mars. We're almost there anyway, aren't we? No. What do you mean, no? We've changed course. We're now heading for Venus. Your what? A direct order from the High Command. And you accepted it? Commander, there's a dying man in there. I don't have to account to you for my actions. Before. Look, Captain. I'm picking up an area of intense heat. It's almost as hot as the photonic field of the sun itself. Turn on the safety system. I think you should tell him, sir. It's no longer top secret. Alpha 2, propelled by photonic energy, is now without a pilot. She is floating in space and is only controlled by the electronic brain. The photonic heat which our radar has picked up has the power of destruction and death. Alpha 2 has re-entered the solar system. During the sun's next revolution, she will start to orbit around the Earth and will destroy it completely, burning everything and eliminating all forms of life. Have we any hope of stopping her? That's why we're going to Venus. It's the nearest point to the elliptical path of Alpha 2. We have but one chance in a million. Our world was in danger, about to be destroyed. Perhaps in a few days, maybe in a few hours, it was up to us. A handful of cosmonauts from Earth, millions of miles away, to try and save humanity. Lucy, you're crying. Dark spots. Those continents. And there are the oceans and the trees. You can't see them. In my mind, I can. I'd like to run down a road that's loud with pine trees. Would you? Yes, and feel just once again the excitement of speed. But we're already running at 90,000 miles an hour. And we're standing still. That's nothing but an illusion. Do you know what day it is? Don't you know that in space we don't count the days? No, but do you know what date it is? It's the 359th of rotation around the sun. That's just part of it. It's Christmas, Lucy. started to land at the interplanetary base on Venus, the largest, best equipped base closest to Alpha 2. From there, Alpha 2 could be intercepted and we hoped destroyed by the remote controlled atomic missiles. Hey, Archie. Is that the base? Yes, right under the protective dome. There's too much hydrogen in Venus's atmosphere. From here, it looks like the glass dome of a temple. You don't need a respirator inside. What about those plugs? Are they purifying filters? Hey, that elevated course is showing results, isn't it? Tell me, why is it that when a man wants to protect himself, he hides himself under a dome? Put on your helmet, kid. I'm going to take you on a quick tour of Venus, only this time it won't be for sightseeing. Emergency action was taken immediately by firing an atomic missile at Alpha 2 in an attempt to destroy this deadly mechanical monster. 8,500. 8,000 miles. 7,500. 7,000 miles. 6,500. 6,000 miles. 5,800. 5,500. 5,200. 5,000 miles. Uh, hold on. Disintegrated. Exactly at 5,000 miles. 
will have a chance to hit her only if the electronic brain which propels her has gone out of control. You see, the two photonic generators which are moving gyroscopically at each end of the spaceship are creating around Alpha 2 an invisible sphere of heat which radiates up to 5,000 miles. We've just had the proof of it. It's indestructible. So one of man's dreams has finally come true. An indestructible destroyer. Unless we have a sudden change in the next solar system revolution, Alpha 2 will start orbiting around the Earth at only 3,500 miles from it. That means 1,500 miles within the safety limit. In a few days, maybe a few hours, our planet will become a mass of boiling mud, as it was soon after its formation. We mustn't give up hope. Something might stop it in time. Maybe a miracle. And while we're waiting here for your miracle, I would suggest that we immediately put into operation all the means at our disposal. They've already prepared to fire missiles from the other hemisphere. Meanwhile, why don't you order your men to reach the audio stations on the beach? You stand by electronic telescope number seven. 6,800. 5,700. 5,200. 5,000, 4,500, 4,000, 3,700, 2,900, 2,400, 2,200. I don't understand. With your permission, sir, I have an explanation. What is it? I think I've found the answer. Tell it to us. I'm sure that due to some technical error, that spaceship is vulnerable. The two photonic deflectors at both two semispheres separated in their fields by a channel. You mean like a halved orange? A perfect example, my son. That's why a missile has gone through. According to you, it was the only one fired exactly into the center of the channel. But why did the last one disintegrate at 2,200 miles? Because of some imperceptible deviation. Perhaps it was attracted by one of the photonic fields. Which is right, Al. There's still a chance. What chance? We'd have to fire on a straight line from another spaceship traveling alongside Alpha 2 at the same rate of speed. I think I've earned the right to try, sir. By the right. Because if my hunch turns out to be correct, I'd like to be the one to receive the credit. And if it's wrong, you want to be the one to risk it. There's an old atomic spaceship here, sir. I'll use its remote-controlled missiles. May I go ahead, sir? Yes. And I hope you'll manage to save humanity. We'll take off and follow you as close as possible, Al. All of us. As if we were right there with you. All of us. Hey, Ray. Now you have a chance to do a real exclusive. It'll be a universal scoop. Let's just make it a world scoop. Not everybody that can stand 16 gammas. Considering the fact that I'm a parasite. Tango Sierra 13, Tango Sierra 13 to Bravo Zulu 88, over. Alpha 
piloting the old atomic spaceship Tango Sierra 1-3 flew alongside us. Both spaceships shut off their engines and the inertial thrust allowed them to fly at fantastic speeds. His mission, to find the channel between the two semispheres of Alpha 2. Tango Sierra, one three, go ahead. Everything okay, Captain? Perfect. How's the reporter? Doing fine. Requesting route check. Present inertial speed, 30,000 miles. Coordinate 1-3 in respect to Vega. Estimated interception point with Alpha 2 on coordinate 4-1 in respect to Earth at 18 degrees. Over. Correct, but change approximately three degrees at intersection point with Alpha 2. We'll go. I'll request another route check on approach, and let's hope for the best. Radio out. Satellite Zulu Extra 3-4. Satellite Zulu Extra 3-4, calling Bravo Zulu 8-8. Over. Bravo Zulu 8-8 to satellite. Zulu Extra 3-4, go ahead. Captain, this is Sullivan. What's the trouble, Sullivan? About 45 seconds ago, photonic field around spaceship Alpha 2 came into collision with the asteroids. Well then? Alpha 2 has changed her course by six degrees in respect to Vega. I'm afraid she'll enter orbit around the Earth before the estimated time. Can you ascertain her present position? Yes, I can. High coordinate 27 degrees. Movement of ellipses gradually advancing. Look out! It's coming towards you. Yes, sir. It will be on top of us any minute. What about the men, Sullivan? They are all on standby, sir. Two mechanics went out of the space taxi to Solar Mirror Foxtrot 1-2. I ordered them not to come back. Commander, see if you can save them. Sullivan, save yourself. It's too late, sir. Sullivan! Sullivan! Can you hear me? Sullivan! Sullivan! see me. What you're always saying, to himself, every man is a whole world. Commander, I've been able to locate the position of the space taxi. Tell it to me. Coordinate pi 28, 8 degrees in respect to Aldebaran. We're changing course and we'll try to rescue the survivors. Bravo Zulu 8-8 to space taxi Bravo 9-1. We're coming in to rescue you. Be ready to bail out. Bravo Zulu 8-8, space taxi Bravo 9-1. We're coming in to rescue you. Be ready to bail out. Out. The commander says you boys should rest. No, Ray. Show them in here.
I just wanted to see you boys. Barry. Jackson. I'm glad to see you. Go and get some rest now. I'll start firing the rockets. Five thousand miles. Four thousand five hundred. Four thousand. Three thousand five hundred. Three thousand. It's disintegrated. I'll try again. Five thousand. Forty-five hundred. Four thousand. Three thousand. Twenty-five hundred. Two thousand. Fifteen hundred. One thousand. Nine hundred. Eight hundred. Going to make it. Seven hundred. Six hundred. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. Another rocket. I'm getting near it, sir. It's too dangerous, Al. Stop. You'll be attracted by the photonic field. I have located the channel. I'll try to break through it, Commander. I'm sure that I can get at least 1,500 miles away from the spaceship. Come back, Al. It's murder. I'm 2,000 miles away from Alpha 2 now, sir. Let me try. Al, oh, that's an order. I'm sorry, sir. But I'm not taking orders anymore. It's a useless sacrifice. Son, I'm 1,200 miles away from it. I don't want to disillusion you. But what would be the use of living if the Earth were destroyed? We'd all be prisoners of space with no hope of return. 800 miles. Al, please! After 200 miles, you'll have only a very slight chance to keep on a steady course. That slight chance challenges me to try. Seconds, I'll know for sure. Al has succeeded in proving the existence of a channel by the sacrifice of his own life, but we still haven't got a chance. There's nothing for us to do but follow his lead. But how, Lucy? Commander, why don't you request more spaceships equipped with missiles? It's too late now. They'd never get here in time. Well, then... I don't know. What's that object that keeps appearing on the screen? It 
takes the space taxi from the disintegrated satellite. It is now circling in orbit around us. The space taxi. I rode on it once with the hell. Love has no meaning anymore, George. Does it? Perhaps it's the only thing that does matter. The world of human feelings has been much less explored than the whole of the universe put together. But now it's late. What have we been doing all these thousands of years? We've been congratulating ourselves on our progress in going faster and faster and faster. When in reality, we've only been getting further away from ourselves. Take my place, will you? Where do you think you're going? Out, in the space taxi. That's madness. Maybe so, but it's not half as mad as the idea that brought us to this point. You are staying here. Listen, Lucy loves you. And Lucy has been and is everything in the world that matters to me. You may not understand it, but for that very reason, I will stop you from going to certain death. Why stop me? We are all going to get killed anyway. I'm going to stop you even if I have to use force.
above you, right in the middle of the sphere. George, I'm listening. Get into the pilot seat and disconnect the electronic brain. It should be on the left-hand panel. Turn off everything else. The pilot's still inside the hibernation cell. Dead. Disconnect all contacts on the left-hand panel. already disconnected. The electronic brain. Ray, you must disconnect the electronic brain. I'm standing in front of it. What should I do? Destroy it. Disconnect the cables. Come loose. He can cut them. There are emergency tools right under the footrest of the pilot's seat. Did you hear, Ray? Under the footrest. All right. Quick. He'd better hurry, sir. We're entering the Earth's gravity zone. Our speed is increasing. Use a pair of wire cutters. Them, George. Now I'll cut the wires. I'm cutting through the last wire. The raised deflector has stopped. Maybe we've made it. How can you prove that the photonic field has been disintegrated? There's only one way of telling for certain. We're coming in. inside the ship. Earth base nine. Earth base nine. Earth base nine to Bravo Zulu eight eight. Can you hear us? Over. Bravo Zulu eight eight to Earth base nine. Go ahead. Are you all going insane up there? If you keep racing that fast, you'll disintegrate when you reach the Earth's atmosphere. Separate and change your course immediately. Alpha two is out of control. There's a man inside. We're going down to try to rescue him. Spacesuit's on.
Lucy, take my place. We'll manage. Stay as close as possible. Ray, we're very close now. The men now going out. Too much air. An orgy of air. My thoughts are running wild. Talk to me, Lucy. Thank you. 